welcome to the Big Picture Manatee, where our mission provides a nonpartisan space to listen, learn, inform, engage, and educate the public about issues affecting Manatee County. Hi, I'm Sherry Corrier, bringing to you over 30 years of experience in government at the top administrative level. And along with me today are my colleagues of the Big Picture Manatee. And hello, my name is Reggie Bellamy, former proud county commissioner of District 2, a resident here, lifetime resident in Manatee County. Excited to be here. Welcome. Hey, everybody. I'm Misty Servia, former county commissioner, urban planner for 30 years working in the public and private sectors, and I'm also really excited to be here. Great, everybody. And as we get started today, we want to remind all of our viewers that the views expressed here are our own and not reflective of the big picture manatee as a whole. Well, we are super excited. We have a great special guest today. We want to welcome Kathy Antunas to, Antunas to our show. Kathy, welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Great. Kathy's the host of The Detail. It's a radio show on WSLR. It's 96.9 FM where she details the information about local and state politics. Kathy, you have a long bio and resume. We posted it on our website. But some of the main things, obviously, we're here to talk about today is Dark Money and your ebook that you have already put um, posted and to talk in depth about how it impacts our local area. Welcome mm -hmm. again. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm it's great to see you all doing a show like this because there's so much the local politics and local government is so important and it just doesn't get enough uh coverage. So I'm I'm really happy to to join you. So I guess I would like to start and I guess my biggest question is, you know, what what is dark money and and how is it legal? Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Sure. Well, you know, dark money, there, there are different definitions out there, but I tend to think of dark money in a really voter-centric, practical way. And so for me, dark money is any dollars that are trying to influence a voter where the voter really has a hard time knowing who's spending that money. And that's where the, you know, the term dark. So, um, People think of this at a national level as these super PACs where there's all this money put into a super PAC, so much money. And then these PACs go around putting out messaging or social media messaging, um, advertisements, billboards. But the voter may not really know who's paying for this. It's just the name of some committee. Locally, that's happening, too. It's, it's often mailers, it can be robocalls. And so anytime a voter really can't figure out easily, you know, not it's not an onerous burden, that for me, and I think most people, is dark money. You know, yeah, that's good, Kathy. And so I'd like to ask you, you know, as the average citizen, how can they spot this? And how do they even know who the best candidates are when they're receiving so much mail? Well, you know, when someone's running for office, there's the campaign for that candidate. And that's pretty straightforward, you know, and you'll hear disclaimers like on television, this message is paid for by the campaign or the campaign of so-and-so is responsible for the content of this message. That's pretty straightforward. And you can look at a, a candidate's campaign donations and see who's paying for things. When you hear or see uh, the committee for Florida's future, or there's always it's always a great sounding name, uh, you know, man, uh, some I'll take some real names, uh, common sense for manatee, use C E N T S, common sense for manatee, or uh, Floridians for a brighter future, or uh, take back our county, things like that. Those are political committees. And then you should be suspicious because that's where the money gets hidden. It gets hidden in committees. Um, I'm not saying they're all bad uh, or dark, but most of them are. And when you've got this fluffy sounding happy name, 
uh, that sounds like an actual group of people when really often they're just like money, some people even call it money laundering, but there's just devices to gather money and then political consultants just go spend this money. That should make you wonder. The third thing is when you don't see anything. And I think robocalls are a really great example of this because it's very unusual during a robocall to hear who's paying for it, right? Um, so you'll you'll get called on your cell phone and someone will be talking to you. And, and sometimes it's like, I'm so-and-so, I'm the chair of XYZ party. And, and then it can be, you know, maybe the party's paying for it. But often it's just the candidate or or somebody else talking to you and they don't tell you who's paying for it. Um, that actually, and I actually got a phone call one time at my home and we have caller ID that pops up on our TV screen and it said Capital One, Capital One Visa. I picked up the phone and it was a town hall meeting in progress uh, for a school board candidate. And this school board candidate is quite adept at all kinds of, you know, uh, messaging. Let's just put it that way. There was no, there was no disclosure about who was paying for that. And it was actually a meeting where, oh, you know, press, press if you want to participate. And I did. And I realized this may just be a recording and they're never going to get to me. So I'm getting a little into the kind of tricky things that can happen, but Political committees are a big clue that there's dark money involved. And man, when there's no disclosure, that's definitely a, a big clue. I'm glad you mentioned disclosures because um, as somebody who's run a few campaigns now, that that's the law. And so whenever we did uh, any type of calls, whether robo or live, I practiced reading that disclosure as quickly as I could to tell people mm -hmm. who was going for it you know, paid for by the Misty Servia campaign. Um, so that's yeah. the law. And it's disturbing that when people don't follow the law, there aren't consequences. Are there any consequences? Well, you know, this is another thing. People assume that somebody's watching the store. And I can tell you, you know, the worst situation is when you have reasonable policies that nobody follows and that aren't enforced. You know, if you have bad policy or no policy, at least you know that, right? Most people will know that. The state of Florida does have some rules governing campaign finance, but I'll give you an example. Um, our supervisor of elections, Ron Turner, I found a, a problem with a political committee financial report. Uh, it there was no name on it or or address of who was submitting it, something like that. Or a donation was simply the address and not the name of the donor. I think that was it. And I asked him, when this happens, do you go back and say you need to fill this in? He said, Kathy, we have absolutely no oversight power. We just accept the report and we file the report. You actually have to go to the state to complain most people are not going to do that. And I would also say that when you do go to the state elections commission to complain, I personally haven't been impressed with their um, enforcement or oversight. So it, it's not a good situation. So what do you do on your own then, Kathy? So if you are uh, suspect someone's using dark money to influence the campaign, what kind of research or can people do on their own? Well, you can go. So there's two places that candidates have to, or not committees and candidates, um, but we're mainly talking committees. Um, so your local supervisor of elections you can go on that website and if you get a mailer where there is a disclosure, you can look up, okay, it's a county election. It really should be on the county website. You can look there and you can look at who's donating to the PAC. But this is another anomaly. Actually, most of the political committees aren't registered with the county that are active in the county. Then you would go to the state website. 
um, it's the Florida D division, um, it's DOS um, slash myflorida.com and then elections, dos.elections. Anyway, that if you go to the state website for elections and the campaign finance database, you can start doing research there. And this is what I got a kind of got hooked on, you know, uh, and used it a lot in, in the writing I've done about dark money. Um, for most people, it may not be something you want. You know, most people don't have a lot of time for this kind of research, but you can do it there. And, and you know, you can, you can get good at tracking it. Um, but I would say as a general rule of thumb, whenever you get a mailer, that is paid for by a committee, you need to have a healthy sense of skepticism and um, and just question it. Be curious about who's paying for that. The more mail mailers you get, I think the more suspicious you have to be because there's a lot of people who just have an unending spigot of money to put into local elections. Um, there's a big return for them uh, in funding local elections. And so they'll just put out an avalanche of mailers. And that's another pretty good clue that dark money is involved. Wow. Um, is there any candidate that avoids the, the temptation of dark money? Well, you know, some candidates, I mean, theoretically, the um, candidates are not supposed to be coordinating with political committees. So the candidate is supposed to stick with their campaign finance chest, you know, and that's it. But candidates with or without their knowledge, uh, they're supposed to be hands off with this, may find themselves getting unwanted support from political committees um, when they want to run a clean campaign and and so maybe someone's trashing their opponent. Uh, but I'd say more often, uh, especially if it's kind of an anointed candidate, you've got candidate who candidates who are kind of happy to know that there's, you know, six figures worth of dark money helping them. So, so the candidates are in a kind of funny position, but I think um, a lot of them probably wink at it and are, and are okay with it, but not all of them. Well, this is such a deep subject and <laughs> we're, um, we're yeah. already closing in on time for our episode today. But what we hear from Kathy is that she's willing to come back and um, do more episodes with us to dig deeper into this subject. I think this overview has been fantastic for our viewers to sort of get a taste of what's really going on with dark money. And so we are very excited to have you come back and we want to thank everyone for watching and remember that you can find us on our YouTube channel at the big picture manatee. And while you're there, like us and subscribe. Also, you can find us on our Facebook at the big picture manatee and our websites up and running, you can find us there at the Big Picture Manatee. So Kathy, we'd love inviting you back to dig deeper in this dark money subject. And also we have some other episodes we're finishing um, with the county budget for 2024. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching today. We really appreciate everyone. Bye everybody.